I'm not letting you go, God, until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go. You're not leaving me, God, until you bless me. If you ever get crazy and say, show me your ways and reveal your glory unto me. If you Hello, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Berean Vaughn, a.k.a. Pinnacle Church. We trust that the message you will hear today will be a blessing to you, and we encourage you to hit the thumbs up icon to like this video and even share it with someone else. If you are not already a subscriber, feel free to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss another one of our videos. Enjoy the message. Okay, speaking and to you um, from Matthew 15, 10, I want to read it a little bit from, um, I was just looking at it in Mark, and Mark says it a little, a little way, a slightly differently. Um, so in the book of Mark 7, um, 14 to 23, it's the same passage of scripture, um, just a different recount and recollection from Mark instead of Matthew. Uh, Mark 7, 14 says, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. So he calls every, all of them, right? And he says, Come to me and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, uh, but the things which come out of him, those are the things uh, that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, uh, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, and he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive uh, that whatsoever thing from without enters in, enter it into the man, it cannot defile him, um, because it entered not in his heart, but onto the belly, into the belly, and goes out into the draught, purging all meats. That which cometh out of a man, thanks. Uh, that uh, from w sorry, that which cometh out of the man that def that defileth the man, for from within, within, out of the heart of men proceed. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things, evil things, come from within and defile the man. I'm speaking to you from the subject, uh, from the scripture, and the subject is there is more than meets the eye. There is more than meets the eye. Um, when we talk about the idea of more than meets the eye, the idea here is that there is more on the inside of something uh, that is not immediately apparent. You see it, but you don't really see it. Um, but there's something on the inside that is bearing its true identity and has an influence on what the true identity of this thing is. So when we talk about on the inside, we mean that there is more to something than you can see, right? There's more that you can see. There's always more. There is a heart. There is a core. There is a root, praise God. There is a source. All of these things talk about what's on the inside. Now, if you uh, shift us, if we shift a little bit and we start to think about even those of us who have to solve problems. I don't know if you have to solve problems in the roles that you do, but sometimes we have to solve problems. And when you have to solve problems, uh, you have to figure out what is the source of the problem. You have to go down and you have to troubleshoot and you have to troubleshoot and you have to isolate and you have to isolate until you figure out where the real source of the problem is. Because if you don't find out what the source of the problem is, you will think that you fixed the problem by fixing one thing, come on, but you only fixed a symptom of the problem. And when you fix a symptom of the problem, the problem comes back after that. Sometimes you take your car in and the car is having a problem and uh, they say, okay, we found out what the problem is. It's going to cost you X, Y, Z. And they charge you for the, the alternator, they charge you for the battery, they charge you for this, this, that. And as soon as you drove home, you still have the problem. Why? It cost you a lot, but you didn't find out what the source of the problem is.
You go to the doctor and the doctor says, take this three times a day. And you spend your money, you waste your time. You go to the uh, pharmacy and you bought the medicine and you come home seven days later and you still feel the same way because you haven't found out what the source of the problem is. And so there is a symptom. There is something that looks like one thing on the outside, but you have to get to what the root of the problem is. And so we need to have this habit, we need to have this attitude, we have to have this tendency to always go deep, to always seek, to always search, to always find out, and to always understand what is the root of the problem. And I just tell you that some of the problems that we're fighting, we're not fighting anything uh, like the Bible says, we're beating the ear. Come on. We're fighting the wrong thing. We're fighting the wrong problem. We're going after, as they say, barking up the wrong tree. Because we don't know what the source of the problem is. We need to understand, Sister Erica, where is the root? Where is the problem? Why is this happening like this? And you need to dig enough, and we need to search, and we need to ask why. There's a concept, if Sister Lisa was here, she'd tell you about the concept. There's a, a principle, a terminology in this uh, methodology called Six Sigma. And the concept is that if you're going to, they use it in the corporate world a lot, it, that's where it originated, and they say if you're going to find out what the cause of the problem is, you don't just have to ask why. You have to ask why five times. Why did I get here late? Well, I was running late this morning. Why was I running late? I got up late. Why did I get up late? I went to bed late. Why did I get to bed late? And you have to go back and back and back and back and back five times. And the principle is not that you ask five times, but you have to ask until you get to the source of the problem. Why is this happening? Praise God. Why am I feeling like this? Praise God. Why uh, am I in the situation that I have? And you know, sometimes when you find out what the problem is, you thought it was a big problem. When you ask why, Sister Odia, and you look and you find out that it was a small thing. The man said for a small thing, uh, for, a, for a nail, the, uh, a horseshoe was lost. For a horseshoe, the horse lost its leg. For a leg, the uh, rider lost his horse. For a horse, the army lost a soldier. For a soldier, the army lost a small thing. But we have to go back to the source. We have to go back to the root. We have to get deep down into what is inside at the core. And Jesus comes in now and he says that you need to understand this principle and you have to be thus minded that there is something on the inside that you have to get down to the root. He says not everything that you see is what you see. Hallelujah. Not everything that you see out there is how things look like. Praise God. Not everybody that says, oh, you're so lovely, I love you. Praise God, really, really love you. Some of them want something from you. Some of them don't want you to know what is really, really going on. Didn't they kiss Jesus? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. He greeted him with what? A kiss. But there was a knife coming in the back. And so not everything, Jesus says, one of them was a devil. Not everything. I'm not, I'm, don't get me wrong. I know we're all great inside here. We are wonderful people. But, but sometimes you really need to look and to see what is going on. That everything is at the root. And so he's saying that you have to be thus minded. You have to uh, uh, understand what is going on physically. And naturally, we have to look and to understand that we can't see with physical eyes only. We have to see with spiritual eyes. And we've been focusing on the wrong things. We've been focusing on outward appearance. We've been looking at how things look. We've been looking at how things strike the eye. And some of the things strike our eyes emotionally. And we have an emotional attachment to the things that we see. Uh, you don't have to say amen, but I know that you saw that shoes, praise God. And immediately as you saw the shoes, you say, I have to get 
there was an emotional attachment. Y'all not saying amen. I'm going to preach until, until the ladies say amen. You saw that dress and you said, that dress, praise God. I, I don't need it, but come on, somebody. But I love that dress. And there was an emotional attachment with our eyes. And Jesus says we have to look uh, beyond this because this is how the devil gets us sometimes. That's how we get a scam. You ever been scammed? You ever get those emails yet that says, you've won, click here. They say, uh, click here, we have some money for you. They say, click here, your father, 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 to how much generation left you some money? They say, I'm a Nigerian prince. <laughs> and I just need a bank account. And this is how the scam works. And they're getting more sophisticated now. They tell you that here is an investment scheme. And sometimes if it looks too good to be true, come on. 50% return rate? Never. The question then is, what is at your core? What is at my core? What is on the inside? What are you made of? Many of us are say, will say that we're deep, that we're strong, and that we're filled with the word, and say we are spiritual. But we have to test it, Brother Chris. You know how you test it? You test something, and you squeeze it. And when you squeeze it, you see what comes out when you squeeze it. Lord, I wish I could preach this morning. You squeeze it, Sister Erica, under pressure. And when you put it under pressure, that's what comes out. Hallelujah. When you start getting into the fights, when you start getting into the problems, when people start to treat you a certain way, show me how you handle it when things aren't going your way. Show me how you handle it. When you're in a bad situation, show me how you handle it. That's what's on the inside. And I need to test myself. I need to look to see in those situations what comes out when they cuss you off. Some of us can cuss them back. We can answer quick. We can answer easy. And so we need to understand what's on the inside, not when you're having a beautiful day or when you're having a tough day. That's what's on the inside. And so I need to make sure that I'm not walking around looking good. Because a lot of us look good. Shoes look good. Dress look good. Suit look good. Hat looks really, really nice. But Jesus says in Matthew 23, 27, he said to the scribes and the Pharisees, you are hypocrites. Why? Because you are like unto whited sepul sepulchers which indeed appear what? Beautiful outward, but are within full of what? Dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Come here. And so he says, I need to make sure that I'm not a walking sepulcher. Y'all not hearing me this morning. I need to make sure that I'm not a walking tomb. I look good on the outside. I'm taken care on the inside, but uh, on the outside, but on the inside, it's all dead things. I need to make sure that the spirit of life is working with me. I need to make sure that I've got the word of God on the inside. I need to make sure that I've got righteousness on the inside. I need to make sure that I've got holiness on the inside. Inside. I need to make sure that I'm filled with the Spirit of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? I need to make sure that walking around, you're looking at me, I've got everything that I, that I might need and so attractive, but, but when you break it down on the inside, there is also something attractive within me. Hello, somebody. Here then, hurry up, pastor. I'm not going to keep you long. The actions of the disciples become particularly relevant, Brother Chris, because they take an action which seems normal. And Jesus calls everybody. He says, I need everybody to come. And listen, hear ye. Everybody needs to hear this. But the disciple says, Jesus, I, I heard what you said. But I'm not satisfied with what you said. I need you to tell me more about what you're saying. Y'all not hearing me. You're going to get it. He says, you gave me some information on the surface. But I want to go deeper with you, Jesus. You're, you're going to get it in a little while. He says, Jesus, I'm not content with preaching and going home and then it's done there. I want to have a deeper relationship with you. Somebody's going to get it soon. He, they, they, they say, Jesus, explain this to me. I'm not content with just hearing your words and saying amen and going home. I want to go deeper into the word until the word goes deep. Y'all not hearing me, but you're going to get it soon. 
soon. I want to go deeper into you, God, so that you can go deeper into me. I'm not content living on the surface. I'm not content worshiping and then going home and nothing else. I'm not content living a regular life. I want to go deeper. I want to go wider. I want to learn more. I want to seek you. I want to hear you. I want you to speak to me when nothing else is going on. Speak to me in my spirit. Speak to me in my soul. Tell me something. Walk with me, God, and talk with me. I want more of Jesus. Yes, I say, take it deeper. I'm not a surface Christian. I'm not just a Christian that goes to church. I'm not just a Christian that listens, say amen, put some money in the offering and go home. Some people don't even put any money in the offering. Some people just listen <laughs> and go home. But he says, I, I need to go deeper. I need to have more. I need to have an understanding. I need you, God. I know that there's more to you. I know that there's more to this. I know that there's more with you. I know that there's more than a surface life. Surface dwelling, praise God. Hallelujah. And I tell you something, you know, Brother Chris, when you start to push, push God and you start to press God, and you start to press into heaven and you start to press in, and you start to say, God, there's got to be more than this. Hallelujah. There must be more in this life for me. There must be more that you want to tell me. Uh, there must be more. You, you must be taking me deeper. I tell you something, if anybody in here ever says that, if you ever dare say that to God, God can handle that. If you ever start to push God, God will push back and answer you. God will give you something down in your soul. God will reveal himself to you. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. If you ever get crazy, brother Chris, and say, I'm not letting you go, God, until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go. You're not leaving me, God, until you bless me. If you ever get crazy and say, show me your ways and reveal your glory unto me. If you ever start push God, God will push back and answer you and show you things you've never known. And reveal to you things you've never seen. And show you himself. Show you his glory. Show you his ways. That we can walk with him. Push into God. God is not just, uh, 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 God is not just waiting. God is seeking for somebody. Woo! Lord, I wish I had somebody this morning. The Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. And in truth, for the Father is looking for you. all not hearing what I'm telling you. You're not hearing me. Talk to somebody and tell them, God is looking for somebody who is looking for him. He's looking for somebody who is looking for him. He's looking for a David that even though you're in the, in the wilderness, David. Yeah, you're all not hearing me this morning. Even though you're in the wilderness, you're still looking for God. Uh, is there anybody out there? You, you might not have anybody, but you're still saying, The Lord uh, is my shepherd. Uh, you're not hearing me. Uh, you might not have mommy or daddy, but, but you're still saying, I will bless. Uh, come here, somebody. The Lord at all times. Uh, there's somebody like David that, that, that's saying, I I'm in the background, God, but I'm still looking for you. You ever start looking for God, he will show you, reveal himself, show up in your life, and start to turn things around. Praise God. We're seeking things. We're seeking all kinds of things in this life. Hallelujah. We're going after all kinds of things. But the Bible says, seek ye first. Of God and his righteousness. And so you want to make sure that you're mindful of what goes on in the inside. Because what's in the inside determines what's on the outside. That's what comes out of you. It's almost counterintuitive then that Jesus was supposed to go to them. And he says, it's not what goes in that defiles you. Because what comes in really, the word needs to come in. The spirit of God needs to dwell on the inside and come in. But Jesus says it like this. He says it's not what goes in that defiles you. And it's almost counterintuitive. But understand that Jesus wasn't talking about everything that goes in. Jesus was saying there are certain things that go in that don't affect you spiritually. Y'all not hearing me. There are certain things that go in that are just uh, natural. They're carnal. There are certain things that you eat, you're just going to poop it out. 
The ice cream that you're going to eat later, y'all not hearing me. That cheesecake that y'all love, y'all not hearing me. Y'all eating all kinds of things, and he says, that doesn't matter. He says, you're quarreling about things that don't matter. There is something more important. He's saying you need to think about the soul. Jesus is not saying you're not supposed to watch your diet or watch your weight or doing anything. He's not saying that we're supposed to eat candy all day. He's not saying that we're supposed to be unhealthy. That's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying the doctors will tell you about that. I've set up doctors for you to tell you how to eat right. I have experts out there they will tell you how you're supposed to eat but there is something more important than the body hallelujah because he says there is a man that can uh, destroy the body but they can't touch the soul he says you can uh, cast this body burn the body destroy the body but your soul y'all not hearing what i'm saying to you i need to have my soul right uh, i need to know that my soul is right with god uh, i need to know that when the Oh, God is called up yonder. My soul says, yes, Lord, here I am. And he's saying there's something more important than the physical body. Something more important than when you eat that and what you're eating. Something more important than diet and exercise. Even Paul says a bodily, a physical exercise profiteth little. It still profits, but it's little compared to my soul. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying to you. And they can kill your body, but make sure your soul is right with God. Mm, somebody said, it is well. Uh, it is well with my soul. Y'all are hearing me. Is it well with you? Well, uh, I don't know how I feel this morning, but I know it is well uh, with my soul. Preach, Pastor God. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it is well uh, with my soul. Uh, I don't know how things are turning out, but I know uh, it is well uh, with my soul. Uh, I've got a savior, Sister Makala. Oh my God. Uh, I've got a redeemer. I've got somebody. A caretaker. I've got a bishop over my over my soul. It is well. It is well with my. It is well with my. It is well with your. Ah, oh God, He says the things from the dirt will return to the dirt, but the soul belongs to God. He said, "I formed man from the dust of the ground." Hallelujah. Uh, let me just explain something to you. What God is saying is that the body is so easy for me. I can fix that just, pff, don't even worry about the body. Hallelujah. You're not going to die now. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. Let, let me just tell you, let, let me just interject that. Just in case you're thinking about, okay, heaven, here I come. Because we're talking about the soul. God is saying, don't even worry about the body. I heal you with a word. Yeah? He, he says, I send a word and I heal you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. He says, I don't even come down. I just say, be. He says, I can spit on the ground and heal you. Y'all not here. I can send you in the water and I can heal you. I can touch you and I can heal you. I can send a word and I can heal you. But my soul... More important because it's eternal. My flesh shall be destroyed, but my soul will see God. Praise God. And so he says, when I, when I created man, I created man from the dust of the ground. The flesh came from the dust, but the soul, I breathed into that. I breathe into that. He says, he says the body, the physical thing, it comes from the ground. It's nothing. It's dirt. It's dust. It's clay. It's mud. But the soul, I... And man became a living soul. My soul needs to be right with God. I need to know something about my soul. Hurry up, pastor. And so the key term then as he talks to them he describes for them, number one, as we see, is that we need to get deeper. Number two, as we see, is that we need to understand that there are levels of priorities and the soul is important, most important in this context. Number three, though, Jesus uses a word and the word that he uses is defiles the soul. Now, when we look into the context, into the definition, rather, of the word, the word defiles 
defiles means to corrupt. The word defiles means to corrupt or to make common. You can corrupt a thing by making it common. You can corrupt a thing by devaluing it. And when you devalue the thing, you make it common. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you, but you're going to get it. He says there are certain things that corrupt you by making you like anybody else and commonize you. You know, you say, you, them, them are just some liquor, what? Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all from Jamaica, you understand? And, and what he's saying is that there are certain things that turn you into a commoner. But he says you are princes, you are priests. He says you are royal. How oh God, he says you are chosen. He says, he says he has chosen you even before the foundation of the world. And he's saying that there are certain things that hell will send against you to bring you down to a common level, to make you like any old anybody, but you're not anybody. You're not supposed to be common. You're not supposed to be defiled. You're not supposed to let anything bring you down, Sister Erica. Don't let them bring you down. You're not just anybody. You're a queen in this place. Uh, Lord, have mercy. You are a royalty upon this land. Uh, you need to walk with your head held higher in confidence in your God uh, because you are not nobody. Don't let it defile you. And what happens uh, is that the devil, the enemy of your soul, uh, will send certain things, Brother Chris, uh, to defile your soul, uh, to pull you down. Uh, that's why you're facing so many fights. Uh, that's why you're facing so many issues. Uh, that's why so many problems pop, you, uh, pop up in your way. Uh, so that you can defile uh, and come down to their level. But the devil is a liar. I am seated uh, in heavenly places uh, in, with Christ Jesus. Uh, the devil is a liar. He has raised me up uh, with Christ Jesus. Uh, the devil is a liar. I am uh, a new creation. Uh, I am a, a new creature. I am royalty. Are you a pastor? Are you a praise God? Uh, so we have to understand that there are certain things that pop up in your way. You ever have some things just pop up in your way on the day? You're going to work and, and something just pop up. You have your business plan and something just pop up and something just happen. Or, or sometimes you're just living your life. You have some plans and certain things just, just keep happening. And it's, and it's like it's trying to pull you off track. It's like to, it's trying to pull you somewhere. It's like it's trying to get you to think certain ways. Like it's trying to get you to think down. And God, and God is saying it's defiling you. It's devaluing you. It's trying to pull you down. But, but God says you're not supposed to pull down. Be pulled down. You're not supposed to be down in the dull drums, in the, in the dust. You're, you're, you're not supposed to be down there. You're, you're supposed to be seated with Christ. You're supposed to keep your eyes uh, on these things. Your mind is supposed to be lifted up. Praise God. So when you engage in certain conversations and arguments, tit for tats, they're not for you. They devalue you. When you hang out with certain people that are not for you, they devalue you. When you listen to certain things that are not for you, they devalue you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go to certain places that you're not supposed to go to, they devalue you. When you involve yourself, when we involve ourselves, let me say it like that, so you don't think anything in certain situations and circumstances, they pull us down and defile us. God is saying, I don't want you to be defiled. I want to put something on the inside that's not food, but something on the inside that will make you better, that will lift you up. I want your source to be right. I want the core to be right. Hallelujah. I want the inside to be right. I want the heart to be right. I want when they squeeze you, the only thing that comes out is hallelujah anyhow. Come here. I want when you get squeezed, all you can say is, well, praise the Lord. Y'all not hearing me. This. When, when you get some news, all you can say is, well, God is good. Uh, God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yeah. Woo, Jesus. I, I, I want, I want, he, he's saying, I want when whatever you go through, whatever you face, whatever you find, you're still going to bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, a praise will still 
God does this, hurry up pastor, with a thing called incubation. Uh, and what he does is he'll set you aside and put you in an incubation period. And the best way to understand the incubation period is to understand uh, a principle of the egg. Uh, an egg, uh, when an egg is incubated, the egg has to stay, the, 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 uh, the embryo has to stay <clears throat> inside of the egg for a particular point in time. And in the egg, uh, the embryo develops. You've got to stay inside of the egg until you develop. Come on, somebody. You've got to stay in where God has you mm -hmm, until you develop. You've got to stay in this sack until you develop. You've got to stay in this place until you develop. You've got to stay right where God has you until you develop. You can't leave and he will incubate you. Incubation refers to the process of maintaining controlled conditions. Touch somebody and tell them, God has your condition controlled. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You don't get it. You don't get it. God has my condition controlled. Uh, the, the controlling condition, God has it controlled to support my development, to support my growth. Uh, uh, just like an egg, just like a microorganism, uh, uh, God has a period of development and preparation before I can stretch my wings like an eagle and fly. You are looking out and seeing everybody flying, but God says it's not flying time yet. It's incubation time, and you're in incubation time, but I've got the environment controlled. Oh, Jesus, I'm feeling it now. I don't want to keep you long. He says, I've got everything under control. Touch your neighbor and tell him, God has your situation under control. God has this problem under control. God has the issue under control. God has the person, Lord God, under control. God has everything. I'm incubating, but I'm under control. I'm locked up, but I'm under control. I'm wrapped up, but I'm under control. And the problem in the incubation period, three things is that you get lonely. You feel isolated during the incubation period. But sometimes isolation is important because when he locks me away from one thing, he opens my spirit to something else. If I didn't have a period of isolation, I wouldn't be able to hear uh, what God had to say to me. Amen. I had a friend in Jamaica, a co-worker. She was a nice girl, a pretty girl, and, and she broke her knees. But she was, she was really pretty, but she was one of those girls. You understand? She was one of those parting girls. She was my friend. And uh, we used to work together. And she was one of those parting girls. And, and then she broke her knee or ankle somewhere. And I said to her, I don't even remember what she named. And I said to her, how, how do you feel when you broke? And she said, you know something, Kevin? The good thing about when I broke my knee, it took me away from certain people. She said, I couldn't go out. I couldn't spend any time with them. And during that time, I was able to find out about myself. And sometimes we're lonely, sometimes we're by ourselves, but God says it's just incubation. Come on, somebody. God says it's a time that I can distract you. Hallelujah. God says I can distract you. I can remove the distraction so you can hear me alone. Is there anybody ever go through incubation? You ever, you ever go through loneliness? You ever feel alone? And sometimes a lot of people are with you. Lord, I wish I could preach to you. A lot of people are there with you, but you're still alone. People will call you, but you're still alone. And God says, don't worry about it. It's because I want the right word to get to you and as soon as you hear the right word number two you feel like you're in limbo you feel like you're in limbo limitations and then you feel like you're in limbo is there anybody who feels I don't know how long this period is God no egg knows how long they're gonna stay as an egg no baby knows how long they're gonna stay as a wo in the womb but sometimes we're in the incubation period and we're saying, God, we're in incubation. And God is saying, I'm doing something with you on the inside. Amen. Number three, we feel limited. <clears throat> we feel restricted. We feel like we're wrapped up. Like we are unable to advance. Like we're unable to stretch. Like we're unable to reach. 
like we're unable to go for our full potential. We feel like there's something holding us back. We feel like we're locked down. Sometimes it's, it's a sickness that's locking us down. Sometimes it's an issue. Sometimes it's finances. Sometimes it's, it's the situation that we're in, in the job, in the home. We, we feel like we're locked down, praise God, in the, in the I I incubation. And we feel like we're limited. But after you go through loneliness, after you go through limbo, after you go through limitation, God says that there is more to you than meets the eye. There's more to that than you can see. There's more to that that you can understand. The first thing I need you to understand is that the incubation chamber is a chamber in which God has everything that you need. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Notice that the egg does not get any support from the outside. The only thing that the egg gets is sometimes a mother will sit down on the egg and keep it right there. But the egg is controlled fully. Inside of the egg, there is enough oxygen. Y'all are hearing what I'm saying to you. Inside of the egg, it's the right temperature. Inside of the egg is the right nutrients. Inside of the egg is everything that you need to sustain you. I want to tell you that when God is keeping you, God will give you everything that you need. You might not have what you want yet, but you've got what you need. There must be somebody who can say, you know, pastor, I'm in an incubator period, but I never lacked anything. Times were hard, but I've got everything. I don't have what I need, but I've got what I want, but I've got what I need. I don't have everything, but somehow God's been keeping me. Somehow God's been holding me. Somehow I'm still together. Somehow I've not fallen apart. Somehow I didn't walk off a bridge. You know why you didn't do it? It's because God has everything in their keeping you. Number one, uh, I've got what I need here. Uh, right here, I've got what I need. Uh, right here, I've got enough people. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, right here, I've got enough support. Uh, right here, I've got enough money. Right here, I've got enough of everything. Uh, right here, I've got enough of what I, I've got enough love. Uh, what I need right here, uh, I've got everything. In my incubation, number one, understand that incubation, God has everything that you need in there for your development. Number two, mom, understand that the incubation period is time bound. It is limited. Ha, Lord, Pastor Mark, somebody needs to shout amen. There is a restriction on how long an egg can stay an egg. And I don't know what, uh, as an egg, what my time limit is, uh, but I know that God knows how long I'm staying in this situation. God knows how long I'm staying down here. God has an expiration date. Y'all not hearing me. God says there's a limit. Uh, as soon as you get ready, as soon as your time comes, as soon as you get there, you're not staying there any longer. You know what the doctor says? Says, uh, Mrs. Gordon, uh, the baby's gonna come uh, when the baby is ready. And I'm telling you, when your time get, mm, somebody's about to get ready. Somebody's about to come out. Uh, somebody's been incubating. Uh, somebody's been developing. Uh, somebody's been in the womb. Uh, somebody's been sucking up the nutrients. Uh, somebody's been growing. Uh, somebody's been strengthening uh, their wings. Uh, somebody's getting ready to mount up uh, on eagle's wings. Uh, somebody's getting ready to run uh, and not be weary. Somebody's getting ready to walk uh, and not faint. Uh, somebody's getting ready to soar uh, as high as the eye uh, beyond visual range. Uh, somebody's coming out. I'm done here, but watch this, Sister Odia. The last thing that you need to understand is that the egg is not broken from the outside. Ha, ah, you missed that, you missed that. The egg does not break from the outside. The egg breaks from the inside. And God says, when you get ready, there is a breaking anointing. 
when you get ready there is a strength that comes when you get ready I'm gonna develop you when you get ready there's an anointing that kicks out every restriction every limitation every wall every barrier every ceiling everything holding it down God said you don't need nobody to help your baby you're gonna bust this yourself I'm gonna put something you're gonna start praying for your own self you're gonna start casting out demons out of your own house you're gonna call on the name of the Lord our God and your own situation preach pastor Gordon is gonna change when you go through the incubation God said I'm gonna put something on the inside because out of your belly oh Jesus shall flow rivers uh, out of your belly. Somebody touch your belly. Somebody put your hand uh, and say flow Holy Ghost. Uh, run Holy Ghost. Uh, move Holy Ghost. Uh, blow Holy Ghost uh, out of me. Uh, it's coming out of me. Uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, the power of God uh, is going to move God are preaching better than you all understanding this. Uh, I say it's on the inside. Uh, I say it's in you. Uh, I say it's going to blow up uh, on the inside. Uh, you're breaking your own egg. Uh, you're busting your own shell. Uh, you're coming out. Hallelujah. It's a breakout. Anointed. I'm going to break out. I heard him when he told Isaiah. He says, stretch forth your curtains. He says, let them uh, enlarge uh, the place uh, of your dwelling. Uh. It's Isaiah 54. Uh. He says, uh, uh, spear not, uh, lengthen uh, your cords uh, and strengthen uh, your stakes uh, because uh, you're going to break forth uh, on the left hand uh, and on the right hand. Uh, I'm going to break out over there. Uh, and when I'm done over here, uh, I'm going to break out uh, over there. Uh. Y'all not hearing me uh, down in Jamaica, Brother Chris. Uh, they say your boss right now. Uh, Y'all not catching me. Uh, they say down in Jamaica. They say your boss right like what? Uh, BJ. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Uh, somebody's about to bust away. Somebody's about to break out. Somebody's about to increase. Somebody's about to open up. Somebody's about to prosper. Somebody's about to step into a new era, a new environment, uh, a new place. Uh, somebody is about to get what God. It's a breakout anointing. Well, you don't have to ask nobody for help. It's a breakout anointing. Where you break the yoke and, and destroy the yoke. Hallelujah. It's a breakout anointing that dis defeats the enemy. There, there, there's an anointing that comes and the anointing only comes. Brother Kevin, you have to stay in the incubation chamber. For the anointing to come. You can't get out of it. That's the only place you're going to get it. In the chamber. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It feels like a furnace. But if it was a furnace, you wouldn't be here still. Come on, somebody. That's not a furnace. It feels like a furnace. But how can you say amen? How can you be saying hallelujah? How can you be praising the Lord if, if it was a furnace? You'd be dead. Uh, I might be in a furnace, uh, but I've got a fourth man. Uh, mm. Y'all going to make me preach this morning. I feel this thing. Down in my toe. There are three types of breakouts anointed. <laughs> Number one. There's an anointing that breaks down barriers. Hallelujah. Now a barrier is something in front of you that stops you from going forward. And a breakout anointing that breaks the barriers removes everything that stops you from going into, hallelujah, what God has for you. So the breakout anointing causes Jericho walls, hallelujah, to fall down. The breakout anointing causes waters and seas, hallelujah, to move, hallelujah. The breakout anointing causes mountains, y'all not hearing me, eh, to get out of my way. It's a breakout 
anointing, but it comes in the incubation period. Nobody's going to lay hands on you and give you this anointing because that's not how this one comes. This one comes in the chamber. Hallelujah. This one comes by development. This one comes uh, when you're ready. You ever see the egg hatching yet? You see the egg hatching and it just... Just start pecking. And sometimes the barriers don't fall one time. Come on, somebody. Sometimes they don't just collapse, but all you have to do is just peck and stretch. You're not hearing me. Sometimes it, you say, Pastor, it's not falling. I, I'm telling you, just peck. Oh, God. I, somebody needs to know, just keep pecking. Just, just keep pushing. Just, just keep stretching. Just, just keep moving. Just, just keep doing something. Just keep stretching until it comes out. Number one, there is a breakout anointing to break barriers. Number two, there's a breakout anointing to break limitations. Now, whereas the barriers are in front of you, the limitations are behind you. The limitation, brother Ron, is the thing that holds you back. There's one that stops you, but there's one that holds in your back. And sometimes it feels like something hmm, is holding you back. Sometimes it feels like you're going, but, but something just pulling you back. Sometimes it feels like there's a resistance on the wheel. Sometimes it feels like you just can't go forward or you, you can't move like you need to move. It, it's something in the, in the rearward part. It's something that already has attacked, attached, it's worked itself. And this one is particularly interesting because you said to yourself, but pastor, pastor, this has already happened, but, but the breakout anointing is something that can attack that which is in front of you. Come here. And that which has already happened. I don't care how long they did it to you. I don't care how long it happened. I don't care what they said. I don't care what they stole. I don't care what you lost. The breakout anointing is going to release you from every limitation. I don't care what education we never get. I don't care what we didn't learn. I don't care how we lost out in life. I don't care which brother got it. <laughs> Y'all not hearing me. And which sister got it. And you never got it. Uh, it doesn't matter how your childhood, uh, childhood was. Uh, it doesn't matter whatever. When the breakout anointing starts to work, every limitation, uh, I mean, chains have got to break. Uh, it breaks chains and yokes. Uh, it breaks bondages. Uh, it breaks everything from off of your life. Uh, it breaks a look when people look at you. You know, sometimes people look at you and they say, oh, you come from Jamaica. Oh, you this, you that. Uh, I don't think you're going to work out. Uh, but when the breakout anointing uh, is on your life, uh, you're stepping into the palace. Uh, you're working in the uh, White House. Uh, you're moving into corporations. Uh, you're not hearing me. Uh, the CEO office is waiting for you, baby. You're going into the role. Uh, you better call me doctor because the breakout anointing, uh, you better put the PhD uh, because nothing is going to stop me. Uh, maybe your family never got that far, uh, but when the break mm, out anointing starts moving, uh, limitations break off of your life. Uh, you're buying the house, uh, you're owning the car, uh, you're owning the property, uh, you're owning multiple uh, streams of, inve uh, of income. Uh, why? Because of a um, oh my god, y'all not hearing me this morning. And number three, there is a restriction. There is a rest uh, sorry, break down barriers, break down limit. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, restrictions is the one that hold you back. The limits, just correct that. So you have, you've got uh, barriers in front of you, restrictions behind you, limits are above you. Okay, limits are the ones that are above you, and these ones try to prevent you from moving up. Try to stop you from getting into new levels. You're staying there all your life. All right, you get a little job, you're not moving. You get a little house there, you're not moving. You're staying in that one bedroom. You can rent, but you, you never get a house. That, that's the limitation. You never increase your knowledge. You never increase your capacity. You never get any more than you have. There will be no increase on your life. But when the breakout anointing starts to work, hallelujah, you start to climb ladders. You start to break ceilings. The brass heaven has got to move from over your life. 
hallelujah, cloud starts to blow away. And you start to have an open heaven over your life. I'm done. But I want to tell you, there's more to you than meets the eye. There's more to you than what even you see. There's more to you than what you even know. And you just wait in the, in the chamber, baby. You just wait in that egg. You just let God do his work in you. Hallelujah. You just wait there and develop till you start breaking. The problem is when you start breaking around, people are going to look at you and say, you're lucky. <laughs> They're going to say, I don't know how you're so lucky. You don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how long I've been waiting and praying. You, you don't know when I was on my knees saying, Lord, uh, how long? You don't, you don't know when I was there uh, calling in the prayer line. You don't know how long I was asking for help. You don't know how long I was saying, can you pray for me? You don't know how many times I came to the altar. Hallelujah. You don't know how many nights I went to my bed crying. You don't know how lonely I felt, how limited I felt, and how in limbo I felt. But God said it was my time to break out. God said it is my time to break through. God said it is my time to break in. I'm breaking into every new place. I'm breaking into every new thing. I'm breaking into every new level. I'm breaking into every new capacity to higher heights and deeper depths. When God breaks you out, I know I said I'm done, but plane might take off again. <laughs> when he says when he says that he's going to break you out from what's on the inside and you start to break out, sometimes you get into a new situation and you can't manage the situation. You're comfortable in the egg now. But God says, no, you, you can't stay in the egg anymore. You're going into a new environment. And God says, I'm not just going to break you out, allow you to break out, but when you get in there, I'll see you later. He says, when you get in there, there's an anointing to keep you in there. Y'all not hearing me. There's an anointing to let you stay at that level. David said he made my feet, uh, preach pastor, like Heinz feet, uh, so I can stand on the mountain. Uh, the songwriter says, you raise me up uh, so I can stand on mountains. Uh, and there's not just a breakout anointing. Uh, there is a stain anointing, uh, a stamina anointing, uh, a keep me there anointing. Uh, I'm not coming back down. Uh. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm not going up uh, and then coming back down. Uh. You aren't going to see me fall. Uh. You can watch for me to fall, uh, but I'm not going to fall uh, because there's a sustaining strength from my Redeemer. Come, Sister Odie. Praise God. Who's wrapping up?